All right, and now it's time to introduce the panelists that are here in studio. I have uh, the Senator of Kisi County, that is Richard Onyonka. Good morning, Senator. Morning, Sammy. Morning. Owen Bayer is the Deputy Majority Leader of the National Assembly. Good morning. Good morning, Sam. Good morning. And I have uh, Caleb Amisi, the MP for Sabotic Constituency. Good morning. Good morning. And during break, I was fighting him why he has not been on Citizen TV for so long. What has been going on? Yeah, um, nothing much um, of the economy is doing badly, so we have to work extra. <laughs> I had um, to be away also for my constituents, uh -huh. but we are here now. What do you work extra? <laughs> <laughs> what that you, <laughs> you have to work harder yeah. and extra time. Okay. Over time. I think I need to sit with you outside this studio <laughs> to get the tips. Because I also feel the effect. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And this morning, we have so much to talk about, including what is in the papers. On the standard, you find that Gashago walks back on Kenyatta's attacks. I'm sorry, Deputy President tells former first family for his incessant attacks on them and their enterprises as politics in Mount Kenya holds up. It is a story that has continued on page four um, there that the DP said the words politicians held at the former president are regrettable. He sought forgiveness, saying those episodes should be put in the back burner. I tend our apologies to Mangena and ask her to forgive us just like her children. It was political bad manners and it shall never happen again. We lacked respect for her and it's regrettable. On the Daily Nation, the story is continued on page six and uh, there are even some quotations here that, but the apology, he said, this is uh, the, the um, Kikuyu Council of Elders Chairperson, Washida Kiago, says that uh, the apology needs to be followed up with fulfillment of cultural rights, including slaughtering a goat in a ceremony to be attended by the aggressors and the aggrieved who will both publicly declare forgiveness. And of course, there's several quotations that are cited there of what uh, leaders in the region have said. Um, because you've been away for so long, Caleb Amisi, let me begin with you. What are you taking this for, um, such an apology coming at such a time um, today? Mm. I thought you could have started by the apologist who are here with <laughs> us. <laughs> they are represented there very well. I'm glad to yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I think uh, for a man to apologize is, is a good thing. Um, apology. Uh, is the way to go. If something has uh, happened that you think it was not uh, accordance to the values of the society, it's good to apologize. Yeah, but uh, it's not just an apology from the face value of it. Uh, this is uh, a man who has realized that uh, he's in a political formation uh, without a backing. And so he's going back to consolidate uh, the central region so that uh, he has a, a voice in the government. So mm -hmm. it is an entry point of coming back to the Kikuyus and the central people telling them that uh, we need to be together, uh, those who are supporting Uhuru and those who are supporting me, uh, or those who are in different formation uh, during the last election, let's come together and uh, consolidate our, our region so that we are not left out of government. So it's, 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 a, it's a political apology. What do you mean so, much, so that they're not left out of government? They're in government already? Uh, the future government. And even this government, you can still be in the government, but you are left out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean, Caleb? You, we, we, we face that. We've been uh, in, in scenarios where we are told you're in the government, but in the real sense, you are not, because uh, you basically do not have a backing. Remember, a Kenyan coalitions are based on uh, uh, regional blocks. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and of course, uh, whenever there are uh, decisions, very important decisions to make, like constitutional changes, uh, we just uh, had an article report being presented to parliament recently. Uh, so we are going to look at it. Most, of, most, most likely we are going to, to be talking about constitutional changes, mm. uh, whether by parliament or through uh, plebiscite, uh, but we, we must have. And of course, the uh, regions come with interest. Uh, and uh, at a point where a region's interest uh, is uh, needed, then of course, um, uh, the perceived uh, regional kingpin uh, needs to consolidate his, uh, his troops. Mm. And this is what basically Gashagwa is doing. Okay. So whether he will succeed or not, that is a different, uh, 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 different issue altogether.
that is my view okay interesting uh, Owen Bayer, um yes. so there was a time that uh, campaigns were so heated and mm. it appears that mount kenya was very crucial in deciding that election and eventually it went away the, the, the way it did but for such an apology to come in i think it's about 18 months since that election mm -hmm. what should you be thinking about and is this is this the position of kenya kwanza or it is the position of uh, dp gashagwa thank you sam i think um, one of the agendas of uh, uh, this presidency and this government is to reconcile uh, th this country and bring parties uh, that um, had it we were rough on each other during the campaign and to bring them uh, together to form a united uh, country. So the apology that is coming from uh, the Deputy President, uh, Mr. Rugethi Gachagwa, is uh, within that uh, framework. Mm. The framework to want to reconcile the country and uh, bring everybody on board to unite, not only, uh, like Kakalia be saying, the Kikuyus, but also to unite the country. And um, you can see even the NATCO report uh, uh, th that we had and uh, the committee when it was meeting, it was part of the national reconciliation. So um, we need to look at it from a bigger picture. Do, does this country want to continue to be polarized? You see the Azimio and Kenya Kwanza uh, campaign uh, war was very bitter, was hot. It, 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 it did not spare anyone. But now that the country is at this level, I think it is very important that we could reconcile the country. And um, uh, this, is, this is an agenda uh, of the president. The president, I think, is looking at, uh, and, and his deputy are looking at, bringing on board everybody that they feel part of, not just part of, of, of government, but also part of the Kenyan nation. So I think we have an agenda as, as Kenya Kwanza, an agenda which is good for this country to bring reconciliation, to bring peace among communities. And you can see uh, the Kikuyu community then was really divided in, in the center because the former president was on the other side and the current deputy was on the other side. So it was a tough battle to win the votes there and, and a lot of unpalatable things were said uh, uh, to, to people and printable things were also said and um, uh, it is time we reconcile. Again, uh, uh, Sam, it is not the first time that this country has uh, come to this level of reconciliation. I remember uh, the former uh, uh, president Uhuru Kenyatta after the 2017 election came out to apologize to, 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 the, to, the, to the former uh, Prime Minister. And uh, he, he was very apt. He said, I remember it was a public. Uh, actually, in that scene, it was a very interesting because the head of state, I think, was, was there and the prior, former prime minister was on the same stage. And the president uh, stood up to ask for forgiveness and mm -hmm. that he should be forgiven by the former uh, 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 <coughs> prime minister for the unprintable things that he had said about him and his family and his community. Uh, so it, it is a Kenyan tradition that every after uh, five years, uh, after an election, uh, people find it in their heart, they, in the retrospect, to look at what they say to each other, and say, you know, we are brothers, we are Kenyans, it's time to build a nation, so forgive me. Kenyan so, tradition, you say. But <laughs> yes, it is interesting you know, that you raised that <laughs> scenario because it was, I think it was March 9th or 8th, 2018, yes. March 9th, 2018. Yes. And that handshake really changed the politics of this country. Yes. And it ended up with the insult you saw in 2022 yes. because of that conflict. Yes. So yes. what should yes. this be taken for, this apology by Deepi Gashago? Is it another political moment that may have a lot of impact coming in the future? I don't see it from that perspective. I see it as a way of just reconciling the country. Because I think we've been very, very clear uh, as Kenya Kwanzaa that we will not go uh, the Uhuru way. Uh, it was OK to apologize, but I think it was very wrong uh, to want to use that apology uh, a way to, to kill opposition during that time and actually to, 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 to use it as a, the handshake to bring the opposition into government and eventually uh, shock their responsibility mm -hmm. of, uh, of, of playing uh, as, 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 as the team that is uh, checking the government. So I, I think this remains at that level. 
It is uh, deep to the level that it is for reconciling the communities and reconciling the, the, the country. I think it will remain at that, but it, I do not see a political moment out of it. But I like how it has been received. I, I, th I thought Caleb said that uh, yes. it is the deputy president trying to position himself uh, within the region, yes. but also saying it's trying to get some stake in government, even if the, even if he is in government. You, you know, you know, you know. Caleb has lost touch with politics, uh, uh, and uh, uh, he can say certain things that um, uh, he wants to say. But I, I want to tell him that the deputy president and the Kenya Kwanzaa uh, administration is very firm in central Kenya, and uh, uh, deputy president Gathi Gachagua does not have to do anything. To, 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 he does not have to go out there and apologize to people to consolidate power. He already has power. He is the uh, bona fide uh, leader of that region by virtue of his position. And he speaks for the majority in Mount Kenya as a leader. How do you measure that? Uh, of, of course, look at the votes that came in. No, no, no. That was the election. I'm talking about now. Yes, but you see, that has not changed. There hasn't been any... any thought of no confidence in him in the region. If you look at the voice that came in from Mount Kenya uh, region to Kenya Kwanzaa, it tells you that the deputy president and Kenya Kwanzaa government are firmly in charge of the voter population and the general population in Mount Kenya, in spite of, <laughs> in spite of uh, uh, yeah. President Kenyatta having on, been on the other side. Mm. So I, I do not think My this is, clearly the, the votes in Mount Kenya are already <laughs> consolidated. Right. They are already right. consolidated. Okay. And uh, right. Deputy President Gachagua does not need to go out there to want to consolidate uh, uh, the votes. You, you know, Caleb, he said that you have lost Yes, yes, politics. yes. yes. Politics. And, and you know, I, I, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's, how they, that's how they behave when they have, they have, they have also lost touch. Because... Let me help you. <laughs> Let me help you, my brother. Sammy, mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually sitting here feeling really nice. Because <laughs> what my brother is talking about, if you were to analyze what he was saying immediately after the elections, yes. go all the way from September until December and maybe January, February, yes. you would have been shocked, the baptism that my brother has now, yes. agreeing how it's a Kenyan tradition <laughs> for us to have friendship within politics. And you know the way it is, as Honorable uh, Deputy President Gashagwa is consolidating his, his power and his authority in central. Sami, why I'm happy tonight is because I've sat in this studio and I've said how I wish many of us would not take politics too seriously. Mm -hmm. How I wish many of us don't take politics personally. How I wish many of us don't use violence to try and argue and convince a friend or enemy that this position that you have taken is the same. The reason why Honorable Gashagwa is in the position he is, and the reason why he's going to look for Mamangina Kenyatta, mm -hmm. is because Ndini Nyoro is messing up from the other side. Ndini Nyoro is running everywhere. In fact, I'm expecting him in Kisi. Uh -huh. The next two, three weeks, he's running to Homa Bay. Ndini Nyoro has started a presidential campaign. I don't know whether the deputy president, Honorable Gashagwa, is aware that he is the young hot blood that looks like he's got everything on his fingertips and he's running around. So Gashagwa is insecure. And he's insecure for very simple reasons. Number one, he must go back to the Kenyatta family to discuss with them the leadership of Central has consistently, through history, through the continuation of this thing that has been happening in our country, and that is the leadership has always been shifting from the Nandi or the Kipsikis community back to the Kikuyu community, and it has just been like that since independence. So the Kikuyu community has consolidated it itself historically. They have taken a common position historically. They have made decisions which were based on logic, intelligence and capacity and this time around they actually voted using ideology which changed and the ideology was they are these rich people and we are the poor so you guys go in there and shake the debe find out why the rich people have taken everything from central find out why central has got a lot of alcoholism going on find out why central husbands are not keeping their wives and all find out why all the middle class and all the wealthy people of central have left the ancestral homes and moved away and left Central having a social economic problem, which 
was supposed to have been sorted out by what? By their party. Now, farmers are going crazy. You are taxing avocado. The things which were supposed to be cheap, they are no longer cheap. And what has just happened, and it has shocked Central and all Kenyans, members of parliament from Central are now actually confessing that when they passed the deal, <coughs> they didn't even read it. So everybody in Central is shocked, including Ashagwa. When they go to functions, you saw Gashako the other day talking about how please, uh, even the government now needs to stop taxing Kenyans. It's because things on the ground in Central today, the only man who's left standing is Wamushomba. Everybody else is in hell, Sami. So the reality you have is this. Gashawa is now realizing, my deputy president, that one, he cannot run and compete like Ndidi Nyoro is doing, running around all over. Because Ndidi is going to talk to the youth who now believe. Look at what has happened in Senegal. 44-year-old boy is now who's what? Man is now who's become president. So Kin and Ndidi are saying, hey, we thought William Ruto as president was young at 50. Now they want to bring it down even up to 38. All right? So the reality that is happening, what you see happening in Central is that Gashagwa has to eat humble pie. Why? Because he knows Uhuru is around, Uhuru is not sleeping. The arrangements politically, the realignments which are taking place, that is why you see in Transoia there's noise from there. That is where you see people beginning to position themselves. That's why you see everybody, and of course you have to look at the our party leader, Honorable Raila, when you look at the situation of him going to the AU, mm -hmm. and then you now juxtapose that with the presumed, I saw Gashawa, uh, DP Gashawa talking about saying, I didn't see a handshake. Kwani, what has Raila been going to state house to do with the president? If you think that's not a handshake, then the, it means you are in another world. The handshake is taking place there and then. For the president to agree to support Raila, that is actually a gentlemanly agreement for, that our party leader went and discussed, and the president was magnanimous. He has come out very well on this issue. I think uh, prime minister is going to win this thing. And then after that, the politics is going to change. Mm -hmm. You are going to have new players in this republic. So, Sami, DP Gashawa is scared to death. If Mamangina does not agree with him. Remember, they took his her goats. I was sitting here asking, why, why are you going to collect Mama's goats from her garden? Uh, from this small place he has, yet you are going to take goats <laughs> from her shamba. And you know the taboo. It's a small place. The taboo that is associated <laughs> with stealing goats from somebody's small shamba. All right? <laughs> and then you go and uh, either chop them off or eat them or, or slash them, and you're trying to get even, and those things. Those things can be very calamitous. Those things, you must handle them the African way. That's why those wazes of the Council of Elders are saying, there is a way you are going to cleanse what you did. Otherwise, there's no deal. So the deputy president is really scared. The only thing so, I know so is a brave man. Uh -huh. He may go through the face and he may face the challenges. But you see, unless central, gets what they were expecting out of this government. Central might end up becoming the worst voter for William Ruto in the coming elections. <laughs> you said that um, it needs to be resolved the African way. Yes. So you agree with what the elders are saying? You can't go and take somebody's goats and chop them off. You are cutting the nini. You saw those things that were happening. You are burning goats in somebody's compound. Whether you hate them or love them, there are things, there are boundaries we must maintain. We must have sanity, Sami. Good manners. You know this politics we play in <laughs> Kenya here. I always talk about it. Why don't we have good manners? Don't insult somebody. Use logic and argument to convince them. It is a much infectious way of getting somebody to your side. But if everybody, if I disagree with my somebody in Kisi, can you imagine me carrying a panga going to his home to one slash his goats? And, and donkeys, and because they either defeated me or I defeated them. The deputy president says that um, our unity is our strength, and that's why I keep insisting that our generation should be protected. Anytime we're in the government, we need to have unison in our thinking and loving one another. That's what he was saying. Um, I'll get to you, Moshmua Kaleb, but uh, first, yes. oh, Moshmua Baya, so 
with, with that in mind, what uh, Senator Nyoka has said, and also this statement by the Deputy President that uh, mm -hmm. the region needs um, unity, do you agree that there's that emerging threat from your chairperson of Budget Appropriations Committee? Um, you know, uh, politicians, especially from uh, 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 the Azmio side, would uh, always uh, want to see cracks within government and they would celebrate that and they would want to even push the wage harder <laughs> so that they benefit from a fallout. But you see, that is not the case. The Kenya Kwanzaa government is intact and um, the relationship between uh, uh, Gachagua and Nidinyoro is uh, intact. I was in Muranga during Sabina Chege's um, uh, uh, gig and uh, it is very clear that um, there is no uh, problem between the two politicians. Very, very, very clear. And uh, yes, uh, Didi Nyoro is uh, a young man who is uh, exploring his political ambitions and he wants to be a household name in this country. But that does not in any way interfere with the plans that Kenya Kwanzaa has. So to read uh, the kind of politics that um, uh, my friends, they are very happy when uh, they, they imagine and actually uh, start, uh, start believing that uh, actually there is a problem uh, in, in Kenya Kwanzaa because of, um, of uh, what Dindi Nyoro is doing. I, I do not think uh, that is the case. Um, you see, but, but, but those issues that he raises about the discomfort yes. in Mount Kenya, yes. and I'm sure you saw those images of the MP for Kandara, the MP for Gatanga, complaining about the taxation measures being put in place. Uh, no, no, I have been on this show and I have said this. I have said this and I, 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 I want to repeat and stand by what I said. You see, if you come to Parliament, and uh, the MP for Gatanga, he's a good friend of mine, but I was very disappointed. And he's a good lawyer. He, he's, a good, uh, he's a good guy that relied on a lot of things during the campaign. Yes. But, you know, you need to really distinguish politics and, uh, and, and reality. You see, this... He this, was saying the truth. No, he was <laughs> politicking. He was politicking because, uh, uh, of course, the Finance Bill 2023 made very many people unhappy. Very mm -hmm. many people unhappy. And uh, actually, what that bill was uh, what we would call acrimonious. But it was the right thing to do at that particular moment. And in politics and in leadership, there are certain decisions that you make that may not be popular with the people, but may, may, they may be the best remedy policy that you need at that particular time. And that is politics. But you see, you, 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 that is leadership, not actually politics. But then you bring in politics. And say, so you see, because I voted for this thing and people are unhappy, I want to change cause and want to look like I am with the people, you know, so that you remain uh, in favor. I, that, that is lack of wisdom. Personally, if I went to make a decision, uh, uh, Sam, if I want to make a decision in parliament, and I would think about it. I say, yes, this may not be popular with my people, but it may be the right thing to do at this particular time. As a leader, there are times when I have to take the reins of leadership and say, we go this way because I am the leader here. You gave me the mandate to lead. You looked at me and thought about me and said, yes, but, this but guy. Do you agree? This guy has the mind <clears throat> yeah. to lead. Do you, do you agree there's a bit of dissatisfaction in the voters in North Kenya? What I agree about is there's a, there's this, there was dissatisfaction in the 2022-2023 finance bill. That is true, and it was across board. But as leaders, you need to take the hard decisions, and that is why you are called to higher levels of leadership. You know, when, when you are voted as MP, mm. the people have put you in a higher level of leadership. And when you are in that position, you, not, you need not to, to think about what will they say when I make this decision is, how will this decision that I'm making impact on these people in the long run? That is the kind of uh, decision making that I make. So when uh, the Kandara MP Wakili Mureu goes out there and now disas dissociates himself <coughs> from a decision he took in Parliament, mm -hmm. uh, he, he, he actually owes the people of, uh, of uh, <laughs> Gatanga an apology. Okay. He needs to go out there and apologize <laughs> first before he says, you know, he needs to apologize. I made a mistake. I, I took a vote which I should not have taken. You know, that is what I want to see of him if he's courageous to go back and apologize to the people for the decision they took. But I want to call on leaders in this country that uh, when you are put in the leadership as an MP or as a senator, you have been given higher level of leadership. You need to live by it. 
There are times when you need to come down and look at this is political and this is leadership. All right. I need to give leadership to my people at a time even when people think I should do otherwise. And that is what strong leadership, and this, that is what this country needs. And that is the leadership that William Ruto is giving this country. Okay. That oh. As president, yeah. he needs to take the hard decisions. Decisions that might not be popular, but they might be best for the country. All right, Caleb, you were mentioned uh, by your colleague uh, in a manner that uh, was mm. not exactly flattering. I don't <laughs> know if you have any right to reply, any, any reply you want to make. Uh, yeah, I was actually waiting for that chance. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, um, uh, Honorable Ba is my good friend, uh, but uh, definitely you can see he's speaking in staccato. It's very hard to defend a government. <laughs> Uh, he's normally coherent out there, but here you can see yeah. he has some gaps because things, he's are, trying, things are not uh, adding up. <laughs> it's hard to defend a government, especially this government, and I pity him. His, his situation is not the best to be in. Uh -huh. But um, nevertheless, I didn't want us to labor so much on Gashago and his apology and the central people. Uh, but what has come out uh, is that uh, we have a very bad political climate where every elections comes out people hating each other uh, bruise and now it has to have a moment of apology we should not have i think this is the only country that uh, every election that apologies people apologizing to each other mm -hmm. uh, that means that the way we have run our elections is on hatred whether it's the tribe tribal hatred individual hatred and it must stop we cannot run a campaign out of the issues. We've, uh, we've found it so easy and convenient to use our tribe, to use hatred against such an individual. You can see people saying that they, they just hate Raila for no good reason. Uh, you don't want to listen to him. You just say you hate so and so for no good reason. You don't want to listen to his uh, <coughs> uh, agenda. So I think we must change okay. uh, that kind of politicking. We, we do. Uh, and, and it is a very convenient climate that has helped many leaders, that it is just enough to say I come from this re region. It's just enough to mobilize your tribe, just mobilize your community. And it is the easiest way to get to, get to position. But we must, as a young generation, move away from that, move completely and they start looking at individuals that they are, not from which region they come from, from who their parents are, from what they do, from who they married, who are their children. We, we come to a point of abusing our, the mothers of our leaders, the children. People have no space. They have no, they are, they have no the benefit of the media to reply. People have no interest in politics completely. But we, we start abusing the, even the parents. The, we don't even know how the, uh, these people are raised up, how they are feelings. So we come out of politics very, very tattered as a nation. So I think this is a, a, a call for, uh, for leaders to behave uh, going forward, the next uh, coming elections. And uh, uh, it is also funny to hear uh, my leader say that, uh, you know, uh, they have no problem. They have a very serious problem. They are very serious problem. I don't know why they just need to own up that uh, central region no longer support them. And that's why Gashago is running Helter Skelter. He's worried. He will not have given an apology. He's worried completely because now the central have realized who they were supporting, who are not genuine from the finance bill. They were not uh, uh, for them. They were not hustlers have been left. I addressed Asolas recently when I, I, I went on the ground, and it's terrible. Asolas have been left out completely. So the, the message that you gave to the people is con completely contrary to what you are doing. And uh, it, it will come a time when we will also make it punishable to give promises that you cannot commit to. Right. Because it is so easy for you to <coughs> promise to promise, but when you get to the power, you do the opposite then we, we must put a law that you, as a presidential candidate, stick to a manifesto. If you say the assholes are coming from uh, bottom to up, let's see the moving. That is the way, the way in scale. And, and the, because the hustle nation completely yeah. is out, out of but picture. And then the central is also going. Is when you see in Dindi, uh, when you see in, yes. Five years, so that if you don't agree with uh, whether they have delivered on what they promised, then you kick them out. Isn't that what you have? Yeah, that's why you see, uh, they say if you can't convince them, confuse them. What the president yeah. is doing is simply confusing the central people. 
is, is, is uplifting other people to run, to run. So that if I, get, I don't get the votes, let them separate them. That's what he's doing. So the, the, the campaign of Dindi is not is not genuine. It is not genuine at all. Let's not lie to each other. It's, it's being used to separate the central region. By who? By the president. You it's cannot <laughs> run when you are still in the same government. You must resign. Will tell you you, will, you, cannot, you, cannot res, you cannot vie for president and you are still the budget chairman of the same regime. You are lying to Kenyans. <laughs> then he resign if you don't agree with them. I'm not sure I've heard him I say that. Deal. Yeah, but it's you cannot you cannot buy within the same regime. <laughs> <laughs> How? Okay. All right. Let, let, let's this is a just a mechanic. Uh, we'll come back with more. But also, there is something that has been brewing in Transaya County. That is uh, where I come from. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the Speaker of the National Assembly and the Governor of Transaya. Stay tuned for that. Uh, I wonder. I wonder about that. <laughs>